This Hypermill Automation Center basic tutorial will guide you step by step through the process of creating an automation script to achieve the results seen on this part. Here a job list is set up with machine, material and fixture. We also want to automatically program milling operations for the pockets, drilling operations for the holes, and a second job list for drilling operations on the bottom side, in a second setup. So let's go for it. The starting point of everything is an unaligned part, and we will proceed step by step to the final result. First, we start the automation center. Inside the automation center, we see three modes at the top. The first mode is to manage scripts. We will define a new script and call it basic tutorial. After applying, we see an empty script. In the second mode, we can choose from template commands to use the functions we need. We proceed from top to bottom to perform the necessary steps. First, in the Start tab, we have options for new job lists, defining the milling area, selecting the machine, and selecting the material. All these functions are included in this Start tab. Using a double click or clicking on this button will transfer it from the template side to the script. Once added, we apply the changes and move to mode number 3, where we define the parameters within the function. On the first side, we see a locking symbol. An open lock means that during automatic run, selections can be made manually. If you want to change the job list name, machine, or material, simply unlock it, scroll down and set stop for input to yes. This means the automation center will pause, allowing you to define a job list name, such as setup1. You can choose the machine and material, which are now predefined for the automatic run. Later, we will see the automation stop here, allowing selections to be made. Returning to function definitions, the next step is the NCS function to define the origin. Several options are available, for instance, two faces allows us to select one surface for Z orientation and another for Y plus orientation, aligning the part automatically. After setting the NCS, we need to define the stock. There are multiple options, and we choose the box offset method, allowing us to set offsets for X, Y, and Z directions. The stock definition is named stock start, with offsets such as 2 mm in X, 1 mm in Y, 0.5 mm in Z+, and 30 mm in the bottom direction. The bounding box layer will create lines representing the stock size, ensuring proper milling area size. Face milling contour will create a rectangle at the highest point of the part, automatically calculating the highest existing point. After defining the stock, we add a fixture. This involves four steps, selecting the fixture system, loading the fixture, adjusting it to the stock, and finalizing clamping. Different fixture systems are available in the automation center, stored in subfolders in the open mind folder. After selecting one, we load the fixture into the first setup, adjust it to the stock, and clamp it. Finish clamping means the clamping is included in the job list. After the fixtures, we can proceed with basic programming. There are options to adjust some standard hole feature recognition settings if needed. 
After these settings, we will proceed with feature recognition. Additionally, pocket recognition is required, and now I will define these functions, up to the point of pocket recognition. Then, we will move on to the next steps. Select the fixture system. As I mentioned, we can view open mind. When we apply this in single mode, you will immediately see that we have the option to select fixtures and see some previews. At this point, I would like to add a stop for input, so that we can choose, during our automatic run, which clamp should be used. Adjusting to stop, and finish clamping. For finish clamping, we can define a name for the fixture. Perhaps fixture setup 1. The entire feature recognition settings include some standards, like grouping the features, frame creation, and other settings that can be predefined within the feature recognition. You can see some basic settings such as the direction, usage of the color table, and other customizable options in the feature recognition settings. Pocket recognition follows the same principles, including bottom, closed through pockets, open through pockets, and also T-slots. If clamping is applied, the fixture will be added with a predefined name for the fixture. For pocket recognition I want to use only the part, not the fixture. Inside feature recognition, we can make layers invisible so they are not shown during the recognition process. Now, let's move to finish clamping. In this area, we can copy parameters, meaning I don't have to re-enter the same name for visibility or invisibility. I can just copy the parameter by double-clicking here and pasting it with the right mouse button. This creates a direct connection to the fixture setup value. So if I change something here, it will automatically be updated. This makes the automation stable and helps avoid problems caused by renaming layer names, which can lead to issues in the automation run. Once pocket recognition is completed, we can proceed with basic programming. We may want to create new compound jobs, one for milling and one for drilling. Now, we can begin and check if our automation works as expected to this point. We can go to the first command and execute all following commands until the next stop. All red functions will act as a stop in the automation center. At this point, I can define the job list name, select the machine, and the material. Once applied, we will see the created job list on the right side. The milling area will become visible when the start function is executed. For orientation, we select one planar surface for the Z direction. For example, this one, or this one. And we select one surface for Y plus direction, for example this one, ensuring it is correctly aligned. If the position is not as expected, clicking the refresh button allows us to redo the step. Two new layers appear, face milling and stock contour. These lines indicate the stock's dimensions, with an offset for each side in the planar contour at the highest point of the model.
Next, we choose a fixture, for example, a clamping area from 6 to 147, with a jaw width of 120. The fixture is loaded and adjusted, and feature recognition begins. The automation was too fast, so it wasn't visible to us. But now the stock is clamped automatically. The fixture is switched off during feature recognition, and the features including holes and pockets are identified. Compound jobs are created. The next step in basic programming is applying macros, one for drilling and one for pockets. Filters allow us to define what should be applied. Drilling jobs go into the drilling compound job, while pocket jobs go into milling. The macro selection, supported by the virtual tool simplifies finding the best possible variant. When applied in single mode, we can check function by function. Drilling and milling jobs are now assigned based on the detected features. Next, we optimize jobs. Inside optimization, we can define grouping settings and specify compound jobs, for example drilling. Before optimization, there are 17 jobs. After, we have 16, with better sorting which makes a difference in machining. Since some drillings come from the bottom side, we need a second job list. We can search for job lists using the search bar. Regardless of the content, the search provides quick results. We copy the job list and give it a name. We also ensure the origin matches the current work plane. The direction is set to Z minus, ensuring the setup rotates correctly over the X or Y axis. After execution, we see a second job list with the origin correctly positioned. In the new job list, we create a compound job. and we name it Drilling 2. Now I want to assign the jobs to the fitting job list. The function, assign jobs to fitting job list means my source list is set up 1. Then click on a different function and click back, then say the target function should be Drilling 2. and the source compound job, should be drilling. So this function looks into the compound job, drilling, checking job list angles, maybe beginning from 0 to 5 degrees in the z-axis, moving jobs to the appropriate list. So we see here, that these two centering jobs are moved into job list 2 automatically because we have defined it like this. For finalization, we renumber the IDs across all job lists. For this we click on set job IDs. 
The numbering starts from 1 and counts up sequentially. An important function only available in Automation Center is the global clearance plane. If different setups have varying default clearance values like 100, 10,000, or even negative values, it can cause calculation issues. So, when we use the global clearance plane function, we can define a value, in our case 20. Then, when we execute, we can check the NCS of setup 1. The value is 20.5 because we have a stock offset of 0.5 millimeters. This function checks the job list for a defined stock and adjusts the global clearance plane value accordingly, regardless of the frame orientation. For example, this setup is aligned completely different but still has a collision free value of 20.5 millimeters added to the top of the stock. This function checks the job list for a defined stock and adjusts the value accordingly. Finally, we calculate jobs and create an NC file. We can calculate all operations in all job lists and generate the corresponding NC file. This completes the process. Now, I close the part and reopen it to check if the automation script works fine. Let's open the automation center. I start the basic tutorial script in execution mode. This allows us to observe the workflow and required processing time. Now we run the interactive script to program this part. We select a machine first, in our case a virtual machining post processor. Now we can change job list names and select materials. The origin is then defined, and a clamping device is chosen. The clamping remains included, even in the job list. The macros are applied and partially separated into the second job list. From this point, the toolpath calculation in Hypermill begins and we are almost done. The NC file is created in the background, and the process is completed. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. If you want to learn more about the Hypermill Automation Center and what is possible with it, feel free to contact us.